In a previous video, I went into great detail explaining the setup and use of the RA2 rotary attachment with the Xtool D1. If you're looking for that video, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of the screen. The Xtool RA2 is one of the most versatile rotary attachments on the market right now in my opinion, but it still suffers from one very annoying problem that could lead to damage to your machine. And this is the fact that every time you want to use it, you have to unplug your Y motor from the mainboard, and then you have to plug in the rotary attachment. And this plugging and unplugging constantly could lead to the wires being damaged or even the connector on the mainboard being damaged. And if you damage the mainboard, that could be a very costly repair. Not to mention this just takes more time. And if you're running a laser cutting and engraving business, your time is valuable. Now in a previous video, I introduced this RE2 rotary switch, which allows you to keep all of the connectors plugged in simultaneously and using the switch on the front, you can change between the rotary and Y axis functions. So you never have to unplug those mainboard cables again. And that was the version one design, which could only be mounted on the outside of the frame. And this is fine in most cases, but if you're using the X-Tool enclosure, it fits so tightly around the D1 frame that this switch will cause the enclosure to bulge out a little bit at the front. In order to accommodate the enclosure, I designed a second version of the switch, which upon first inspection looks very close to the original, but it can be mounted both on the outside and now on the inside of the front frame member. And so if you're installing it on the outside of the frame, you can click the link in the top right hand corner of the screen right now and follow the original video. But if you're looking to mount it inside of the frame, you can continue watching this video here. Also, if you're watching this video and you've already purchased the original switch and you're looking to update to the latest one, which is pictured on the right hand side, you can contact me on my website and we can work something out because the only difference here is the housing. And so you can see on the back of the housing, the standoffs are longer and on the top, it's missing those two bumps. And if you have the new version already, you can ignore this part of the video, but I'm gonna show you guys here how to switch over from the old version to the new version. And really all you have to do is just remove the two screws at the back and the PCB will come out. And you can take your new housing and you can insert the PCB the exact same way and replace the two screws. And so again, if you already have the new version, please just ignore this part of the video. But if you have the old housing and you're switching to the new housing, it's that simple. On the RA2 rotary switch, you can see on the front, there is a rotary symbol on the left-hand side and a Y letter on the right-hand side. And both of these correspond with the two positions of the switch on the front, one for the rotary function and one for the Y axis function. On the back, you'll find the connectors and included in the kit, you'll get the wiring harness required to complete the assembly. When looking at the back of the switch, the far left connector has a label that reads from machine. And this is where you're going to plug in one end of the included wiring harness. And it doesn't matter which end. So now we can unplug the Y motor connector from the main board for the very last time. And when you're unplugging and plugging in these cables, and even when you're operating the rotary switch in the future, you should be doing this with the machine off. Do not do this with the power on. Now we can take the Y motor cable that we just unplugged, and we can connect that to the middle connector labeled to Y motor. Next, you can grab the cable that comes with the RA2, and it has a four pin end and a six pin end. And just as we did with the Y motor cable, we're gonna route this one behind the Y motor shaft as well. We'll take the four pin end connector and plug it into the connector on the rotary switch that reads to rotary. And then we can take the included wiring harness that we plugged into the connector labeled from machine. And we can route that up and over the Y motor shaft so that now all of our wires are passing behind that shaft. The switch will get mounted under the top of the frame right beside the main board. And to do that, we're gonna be using the double-sided adhesive Velcro that comes with this kit. And so I've applied it to the top of the housing, and now I can peel off the other side of the protected tape because I'm going to be sticking this to the bottom of the frame. If we take a quick look at the side view of the 3D model, you can see that the standoffs of the housing should be touching the back inside face of the D1 frame. I've rotated the model a little bit and highlighted that face so it's abundantly clear and I've designed the depth of the standoff to be the right distance so that when the switch is properly mounted, 
it does not stick out past the outside of the frame at the back edge, so the edge going into your work area. It's a bit of a snug fit between the frame and the rod, but you can rotate the housing in place and then just press the adhesive tape down. Then we can connect the other side of the included harness to the main board. At this point, the only loose end is the six pin connector that would normally go to the RA2 rotary tool. To keep the wiring neat and tidy, I would suggest removing the switch for just a moment. And with the double-sided Velcro, it's very easy to do by pulling it away from the frame. And now taking the rotary switch and making sure it runs on top of the other cables and exits on top of the standoff on the right hand side. You can leave this cable permanently plugged into your RA2 rotary motor or if the cable is not frequently in use, you can bundle it up and tuck it away behind the switch. Use the area between the switch and the frame as a small storage location. And that completes the installation and we're looking at this from inside of the frame but if you were standing in my position looking at it from the front, one of the ways I like to remember the position for the switch is that the right side is for the rotary, so both are R's and the left side is for the y-axis, which is linear. So left, linear, letter L. So that's just something I came up with to make it a little easier to remember. When looking at the installation from the top, just make sure the switch is not sticking out past that frame member, and that way it will clear the laser module as it passes by. And finally, if you were to install the X-Tool enclosure, it will slip over the frame now unobstructed, because the switch is of course on the inside of the frame. With the enclosure open, the switch is still very easily accessible by just reaching inside. If you guys are using any of my other accessories like the mainboard PCB cover, as well as the button cover or the D1 Pro lighting kit, all of these are compatible with the inside mounted switch. And if you don't have these yet, you can find them on my website, embracemaking.com. Now, if it's not already clear, we'll do a quick walkthrough on how to use the switch. First, you can plug in the RA2 if it's not already connected. With the machine power off, we flip the switch over to the rotary side. The RA2 continues to perform and function as you would expect, but of course now you no longer have to unplug and plug those connectors in every time you want to use it. When you're ready to change back to the regular XY engraving and cutting mode, with the machine power off, flip the switch over to the Y symbol and you're ready to go. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching right to the end please consider becoming a subscriber. And if you guys are looking to support my work, visit my website, embracemaking.com, where you'll find more upgrades and accessories just like this one for your X-Tool machine.